Welcome back to Research. If it's your first time here, my name's Adriana, and this channel is dedicated to sharing all the lessons I've learned and am learning as a new real estate investor. In this video, I'll walk through how I've been calculating my projected gains for the pre-construction units I've invested in. In the past, I've always been bothered by theoretical gains and ballpark numbers. So I looked for different ways to get more precise with these calculations. I'll go through two helpful sources and a personal example. Let's get started. There are three popular websites that consolidate and amalgamate information about developments, both historical and current. You may have seen these pop up on Google if you've been researching projects yourself. They are condonow.com, buzzbuzzhome.com, and condos.ca. I find that condonow and buzzbuzzhome provide great overviews about developments, including floor plans, launch dates, deposit structures, and a detailed summary of the development itself. Condo Now even has a function where you can compare different developments. However, for the purposes of calculating projections, I recommend using condos.ca because of this values and trends section that they have on every listing. You'll see two numbers here. The green represents the neighborhood average and the purple is building specific. This is very valuable information because the rate of appreciation or depreciation in some cases varies by neighborhood. The building specific number gives you further insight into if older buildings are holding their value and how other buildings are performing against the neighborhood average. Now this is a great first step before you even commit to purchasing a unit. I'll show you how I use this information in my calculations later on in the video. Depending on the size and the height of the development that you're buying into, the developer will continue to sell units throughout construction. They need only to achieve a certain threshold of units sold to secure financing, and then they can begin construction. What you can do is email the developer's sales team or get in touch with your agent and ask for an updated price list of the units that they have on sale later on during construction. What this information will give you is the changes in the price per square foot. Now, it's important to always date the price list that you get so that you know what the difference is as a function of time. For example, here is the price list of when I purchased my first unit in March 2018. Two years later, in July 2020, I asked the developer's sales team for an updated price list of the units that they had on sale. I want to draw your attention to this unit, the San Francisco, which as of July 2020 had not sold. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do I know that it's the same unit and that there is not any floor premiums to take into consideration? This floor plan in particular is only available in the podium section of the building on the fifth floor. So there's really not a floor or view premium that we need to take into consideration. What this does show is that within two years, the market value of this unit increased by $205,000. Let me walk you through the projected profit of my first unit at Water's Edge by the Conservatory Group. This development is in the Mimico neighborhood. I have another video where I go into depth on how I decided on this unit that I can link here. It's a one bedroom plus den, 600 square foot unit on the fifth floor that was purchased for $485,900 in March 2018. Using the values and trends data on condos.ca, here are the average prices per square foot in the last five years in the Mimico neighborhood and the calculated change year over year. What I would do next is take the average of the increase or decrease and use that to project the increase per square foot per year. In this case, you'll see that there's a statistical outlier in 2017. So, because I like to be ultra conservative with my projections in order to manage expectations, I would exclude this outlier and use the resulting $70 increase per square foot per year. The outlier would have increased the average to $102 per square foot per year. If I anticipate that the building should achieve occupancy late 2024 into 2025, here are the projections. At $1,135 per square foot times the size of the unit, which is 600, the value of the unit would be $681,000. 
minus my original purchase price of 485,900, which would result in a gross profit of $195,100. Now, keep in mind that I use the same increase in value per year because of my ultra, ultra conservative approach to projecting profits. My reason for doing so is that it's better to be pleasantly surprised if it happens to be more than it is to be disappointed. This will also help me realistically plan out future investments as well. I hope you found the sample calculation useful for your own planning purposes. Let me know if there are any questions in the comment section below. Hey, don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. And as always, thank you so much for tuning into research and I'll see you next time. Take care.